Good day and welcome back to my channel. This video is the second part of Values Education Reviewer Series for BLEPT or LET takers. In this video, we will talk about the determinants of morality, sometimes also called as the principles or sources of morality. The first question that we will try to answer is, what is morality? Morality can be defined as the qualification of human acts by which we call them right or wrong, good or bad, based on their conformity or nonconformity with the norms that regulate human conduct in relation to man's ultimate end. In this definition, let us clarify the meaning of three important terms, human acts, norms, and man's ultimate end. When we say human acts, we refer to actions done by human beings with conscious knowledge and with the use of the will. When we say moral norms or norms of morality, we are talking about the standards or criteria of judgment that we can use to be able to make a decision and label whether an action is right or wrong, good or bad. They are guidelines that tell us how to behave in a given situation, or truths that guide us to act properly. Before we discuss man's ultimate end, let us first define what an end is. When humans do a particular act, we always have a goal. We want to achieve something. The end of the act is the natural termination of an activity. But there are different kinds of ends. There is what we call proximate end, or the purpose which a person wants to accomplish immediately with his action. There is also what we call remote end, or the goal which a person or a doer wants to accomplish in a series of acts. One good example is eating healthy foods. The proximate end is satisfaction of hunger, but the remote end is the promotion of health. There is also what we call intermediate end and ultimate end. When we say intermediate end, it is the goal or purpose which is desired as a means to obtain another thing, while ultimate end is the purpose which is desired for its own sake and not because of something else. When we attain the ultimate end, it completes our action, and it stops all further acts. In Christian morality, we consider God as our ultimate end. Therefore, our human acts to be called morally good, it should be ordained to God, the last or ultimate end. Here enters the importance of the determinants of morality. Since the goodness of an action lies in its ordination to the last end, there are two conditions that should be fulfilled for it to be considered good. First, that the act itself can be ordained to God, and second, the agent actually ordains it to God. Thus, the two principal elements of the act, namely the object or means, and the intention of the agent also called end, must be ordained to the last or ultimate end. The circumstances, though accidental to the action, must also be ordained to the last end, since they could also be important. Later in this discussion, we will mention ways by which circumstance can affect the morality of an act. These three elements, objective or means, intention or end, and circumstances, are called determinants, principles, or sources of morality. The ordination of human actions to God depends on them. If the three principles are good, the action is good because it leads to God and makes the agent better. Let us now study further these three determinants of human act. 
The first one is the object of the action. In a human act, the will chooses a course of action. We call it a moral object. The object chosen is a good toward which the will deliberately directs itself. It is what the action by its own nature tends to, independently of the intention of the agent and the circumstances that may accompany it. There are concrete acts that are always wrong to choose because their choice entails disorder of the will, that is, a moral evil. These actions are incapable of being ordered to God because they contradict the good of the person made in God's image. These are acts or moral objects that are called intrinsically evil. They are such always and per se on account of their very object without considering the intentions of the doer or the circumstances. In a Catholic document entitled Veritatis Splendor, we find the following explanation about acts that are considered intrinsically evil. It reads, and I quote, If acts are intrinsically evil, a good intention or particular circumstances can diminish their evil, but they cannot remove it. They remain irremediably evil acts. Per se and in themselves, they are not capable of being ordered to God and to the good of the person. Here are examples of intrinsically evil acts. Murder, direct abortion, contraception, euthanasia, theft, lying, fornication, adultery, and blasphemy. Let us now move on to the second determinant of morality, that is, the intention of the agent. The end intended by the agent, or intention, is the second most important source of morality. If the last end of the agent does not coincide, implicitly at least, with the objective last end, which is the glory of God, the action is vitiated and immoral. Every real action is carried out by an agent, and the agent always acts for a last end. Therefore, although their objects may be indifferent, properly speaking, there are no indifferent actions. All human actions are either good or bad. Besides this ordination to the last end, if the action is really human, the agent gives it a conscious ordination to a more immediate end. The action is therefore a means for that immediate end. For example, someone may lie in order to give a good impression, to save another person's life, or to close a good business deal. This immediate end is what we call the end of the agent. Intention is not limited to directing individual actions, but can guide several actions toward one and the same purpose. It can orient one's whole life toward its ultimate end. For example, a service done with intention of helping one's neighbor can at the same time be inspired by the love of God as the ultimate end of all our actions. Now let us look into the important principles on how the object and agent affect the moral quality of the entire action, because in reality, the morality of the object and the end or intention may not be the same. For example, Someone could cheat a client, that's a bad object, in order to pay his employees' salaries. That is a good intention. Or it is also possible that you have a good object, but your intention is not. For example, sending a gift. That is a good object, but you do it in order to bribe an official. That is a bad intention. 
for a better understanding of how the morality of the object and the intention affect the morality of the action. We should keep in mind that in every action, the agent chooses both the end and the means in the same act of the will. But the goodness of the action as a whole depends essentially on the intention and the means. Therefore, there is a real distinction between the goodness coming from the object chosen by will, insofar as it has been chosen, and the one coming from the will's intention towards the end. This explains why a good object can be wanted with an evil intention or with different kinds of good intention. Thus, one may want to give alms out of charity or out of merely human compassion or out of vain glory. But we can see that the action of the agent has only one moral goodness or evil, which depends both on the intention and on the means. This is because the act of the will is only one and is always either good or bad. The basic principle in this regard is this. For the act of the will to be good, both the intention and the means must be good. If either of these two is bad, the act of the will is also bad. The object chosen is the first condition for the morality of an act and what essentially manifests it. The end is first in the intention, but last in the execution. Thus, what first manifests the intention of the agent and therefore the morality of the action is the object chosen. It follows that when the object chosen is in itself seemingly indifferent, a good or bad intention makes the action good or bad respectively. Therefore, although abstractly considered, the moral object may be indifferent, there are no indifferent action for the individual. A good intention makes a good object better. If the object is bad, the action becomes less bad, but never completely good. Thus, it is never licit to do something bad for a good end. The end does not justify the means. A grievously evil intention makes a good object result in a bad action. A grievously evil intention makes a bad object result in a worse action. Let us now move on to the third determinant of morality, the circumstances. Circumstances are the accidental moral condition that contribute to increase or diminish the moral goodness or evil of an already existing action. They may also increase or decrease the responsibility of the person acting, as in the case of one acting out of fear of death. Not every physical circumstance is a moral circumstance. Thus, the malice of a blasphemy is the same, whether it is said standing or sitting down. But being alone or with other persons would change it, because the others might be scandalized. The merit of alms does not change whether it is given by day or by night, but it will change depending on the effort required. Moral circumstances are traditionally listed as follows. Who, a special quality of the agent. Thus, a certain action would become worse if the agent has a special social responsibility. What, the quality or quantity of the object. Stealing a bar of soap is not the same as stealing a ton of soap. Where? The quality of the place. For example, 
stealing inside a church. With what means? For example, robbing by means of threats. Why? Not to be confused with the end of the agent, it refers to additional motives. How? For example, robbery with personal injury. When? The timing or duration, for example, hating somebody for a long or a short time. The circumstances influence the morality of the action, increasing or diminishing the goodness or evil of the action. Thank you very much for watching and see you on my next videos. For your comments and suggestions, please comment below. You may also want to comment the topics you want me to discuss that will be helpful in your blood review for values education. For soft copies of my presentations, just PM me on my Facebook account, Andrew Olimbiana. Please support my channel, like, watch, and subscribe.